As a relational astrologer, this full moon is probably the most important one of 2023 because it is impacting our communication. Welcome back, Astro fam. Today's video is all about the full moon in Gemini happening on November 27th. As a relational astrologer, this is probably the most important full moon of 2023 that I can guide you through because we are dealing with communication. And we know that in relationships, communication is the number one thing that we need to have a healthy and harmonious partnership with someone else. Now, this full moon in Gemini is going to be a wild one because our communication is going to be all jumbled, all messed up. We're not going to be able to think clearly and that can severely impact our relationships. So I'm here to navigate you through that today. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Mandy Rose. I'm a relational astrologer, which essentially means that when I'm talking about the current cosmic weather, I am guiding you through the lens of how it's going to impact your relationships. Now, I also do personal birth chart readings where I help you have the best relationship with yourself possible because your birth chart is your energetic blueprint. It is your guide. I like to say it's your instruction manual through your journey here on Earth School. And so through that, I'm going to help you understand who you are supposed to be, not who the world tells you to be. Now, I also do compatibility readings. I also do parent-child relationship readings because essentially when you understand someone else's chart, you can understand their energy and then you can mix your energy with their energy to blend it and have the best compatibility. So in today's video, I'm going to move through this full moon in Gemini by first giving you an overview. We're going to zoom out a little bit, look at the current cosmic weather that is leading us up to this lunation. What what is the energy and the influence we're going to be under as we move through that full peak of the moon? Then I'm going to give you, I usually do five fun facts, but today we only have three because the message is very clear. All the planets are acting in the same way in the sky to give us the message we need to hear today. And then we are going to dive into the specifics where I'm going to pull up the chart. Make sure you have your birth chart handy because I'll give you the degree points that you can look for in your chart to see if it's impacting you. We'll break all of that down. And then, of course, I'm going to go through all 12 rising signs. So stick around for that part of the video where I'm going to help you understand where this full moon is highlighting the relationships in your life and where they might be challenged during the time of the full moon in Gemini. And then at the end of my full and new moon videos, I always give you some activities and rituals that you can do around the time of this lunation to work with and maximize this energy. Now, before I go on any further, I have to send an immense amount of gratitude to all of you who have followed me in the last few months, and even more specifically, since I posted the New Moon in Scorpio video. I have been on this YouTube journey for about three years, and it's been quite the challenge, and I've wanted to quit many, many times because I wasn't able to grow. I was trying all the right things, the thumbnails, the SEO, the posting it on my other social media platforms, and I just wasn't getting my message out there. And in the last few months, I'm not sure what has shifted in the cosmos, but I am able to reach so many more of you. So if you've been following me, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to continue sharing astrology from the lens and perspective of having better relationships. I truly feel as a human here on Earth School that relationships are probably the most important thing to us, whether they are romantic, friendship, siblings, business partners, bosses. All day long, we interact with other people. And so understanding the cosmic weather and me sharing that through my YouTube channel is such a passion and a mission of mine. So thank you so much. And with that, let's start out with this overview. Now, this overview, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the planets are up to, but we'll get more into the specifics. So stick around for that. And this is going to be kind of more like a pep talk that I want to have with you. Like I mentioned in the intro, this truly is the full moon of the year that is going to heavily impact our relationships the most. So my advice, my words of wisdom, the best things that I can say to you today is expect that the other person isn't speaking to you clearly. Or another way I can say this is expect to misunderstand the people around you. We have a couple squares in the sky, one being Mercury, the ruler of this full moon, in a square with Neptune, who is rose-colored glasses, living in la-la land, not here on Earth School at all. So that is severely messing up our ability to express clearly and listen and learn clearly. It also is going to give us this energy of people gossiping or expanding the truth or not sharing all the data. It's going to be kind of like, I want to put my lens on it to make you believe or see or feel something that maybe isn't the full honest picture. In addition to that, misunderstandings come from the fact when someone says something and we are quick to jump to a conclusion. And Gemini is this energy of kind of assuming things, um, understanding things in a very analytical or detailed way. 
But that's not always how we have to perceive the information. Sometimes there are more facts. Sometimes there is a differing opinion that can be true at the same time our opinion is true. So knowing this as we move into this full moon is going to be so important. I want you to truly anticipate and expect that every word you hear, every conversation you have with another person around the time of this full moon, that you don't have the full picture. Okay, Neptune's involved, Mercury's being impacted by this, who's the ruler at this time. And then we also have Mars and Saturn in a square. And this is an energy that will be actually happening a few days before this full moon is exact. So you might be feeling this just even the week before. And Mars is our masculine. It's how we take action, right? It's us making a decision. It's us moving forward. It's us kind of being aggressive and pursuing things. And Saturn is that disciplinarian of like, are you sure? Are you doing it the right way? Is this really what you want to be committed to? He fact checks us and he creates obstacles and boundaries. And so when Mars and Saturn are in a square, there can be fighting words. There can be um, limitations to the amount of information that we're receiving, or maybe we're not having all the facts, but we want to take action anyways. So we just want to be very cautious and very careful. Uh, my best advice, other than, like I said, assuming everyone isn't telling you the full story is to stay extremely curious. Gemini energy is about curiosity. It's like, I wonder what else is out there and let me go over here and let me learn from this person and let me find more information and go down another rabbit hole and finding all the things that it could possibly be. So I really want you to stay in the space of being curious. Like, well, what do they mean by that? And what is their perspective on that? And where did they get that information from? And where did that person get the information from, right? The more curious and open-minded you can be to the information that's coming in around the time of this full moon, the easier you're going to be able to work through this energy and to not only continue having better relationships, but also to finding and uncovering the information you need that's going to help you move forward. Because remember, we had this new moon in Scorpio two weeks ago, and that was this huge catalyst of transformation that we're going to undergo over the next six months. And so in order to transform and change and to move forward and to take action, we're going to need more information. But if we just assume and we jump to conclusions and someone says something the wrong way and we just immediately create a story around that, we're not going to have all the info we need, or let's say not the accurate info that we need to actually move forward towards a transformation that we're looking for. And how this could play out, if I could kind of give you an example, and let's say that you and someone else are having a conversation and maybe it's a conversation about something extremely important. We'll use the example of maybe a boss and they're telling you, hey, you need need to get this piece of information to me by the end of the day. And you're struggling because Mars square Saturn is obstacles, limitations. You're looking for the information. All roads lead to a dead end. You're getting on the phone. You're sending emails. Like you're doing everything in your power to get that information to your boss by the end of the day. But it's just not working, right? This is the energy you're going to be feeling. So your boss then miscommunicates that as you're lazy, you're not doing your job, you are slacking off, you aren't intelligent. There's a whole story and there's a misunderstanding happening here, right? So I want you to just honor that. If something like that is happening, just trust that they're also under the influence of this energy and you're going to be able to express it clearly and get that information when this energy passes. Now, the other thing I want you to pay attention to is when people are giving you information and they're sharing stuff with you, they might be making it up because maybe they couldn't get to the bottom of it. Maybe they couldn't get a hold of the exact data or facts. And so now they've created an entire story around the little bit of information that they do have. So they're coming to you and saying, did you hear this? Or did you know that? Or this is how I feel. And none of it really is full picture of the truth. So just be really cautious. Those are some examples of how it can play out. Now, there is a positive. I have to say there's a really good energy that we can kind of tap into. So instead of forcing conversations or having these deep, intensive fights, because fights can absolutely come up around this time with Mars square Saturn, is I want you to take a step back and I want you to tap into the creativeness of this energy because things are foggy and hazy and you're not going to get the facts anyways. Let's use that creative mind. Where can you paint or draw? 
draw or express yourself? Where can you use this energy of socializing with people where it's more lighthearted and it's fun and it's jovial and you're not getting into the deep nitty gritty things? So maybe with your partner, you're having heavy miscommunication and you're arguing and neither one of you is understanding each other. And there's just this sense of disagreement and irritation. I want you to shift your energy and your focus and go hang out with people where you can be more lighthearted. Where can you just have some fun? Where can you just have conversations around really easy, breezy, light things that don't require the depth of data and facts and analysis, if that makes sense. So like going to art shows, going to concerts, going to a painting class, you want to tap into the lighthearted, jovial, witty, um, creative energy that Mercury squared Neptune brings, and not so much the, the deep, got to get to the bottom of it energy that Mars square Saturn brings. Before we move on, let me do two really quick announcements before I forget. The first one being that the 2024 Astrology Alchemy Journal is now available for sale. You can head to the description box below. I have the link there. This is my fourth edition of doing this journal where I not only give you education to help you understand what each new moon or full moon means, what retrogrades, what lessons you're supposed to be learning around that time, and what the energy of each sun season brings to us. But it's also part interactive. So I give you new and full moon rituals for each lunation of the year. I help you understand which chakra you can work on balancing, the herbs or the crystals that you can use for each new or full moon. I give you a bucket list for each sun season. And then when we're talking about retrogrades, I give you do's and don'ts and also what you can expect around that time. So lots of journal prompts and ways that you can work with the cosmic energy throughout the year. I also changed the name to the Alchemy Journal. It used to be called the Retrograde Journal, but I've expanded it to include way more than just the retrogrades. And it's going to help you alchemize your life through each cosmic weather event one at a time so that by the end of 2024, you are living the life that you've alchemized, that you've created. And the second announcement is today I am drinking the Gemini tea. If you didn't know, I have an astrology tea collection that I formulated with an herbal list where each blend helps you align and internally feel the cosmic weather that we're experiencing externally. So the Gemini blend, for instance, deals with our mind, communication, mental clarity. It's what we're talking about today. The herbs is skullcap, herbamate, black tea, things that are really helpful for cognition, mental focus, all the things we're going to need to feel around this full moon in Gemini. And then I've been also drinking the Sagittarius tea because the sun is in Sagittarius for the entire season. And so it's great to drink the blend of the current sun season to help you align with the cosmos. When we get to the new moon in Sagittarius video, I'll be drinking the Sagittarius blend and you will see it's this beautiful bright blue color because we put butterfly pea flower in it. So if you're curious for more information on all 12 Zodiac blends, you can head again to the description box below, go to the website where I list out each blend. I'm also going to be posting a separate video here on YouTube where I go through each blend one by one, tell you the herbs that are in them, give you some fun facts about each one. And I also dive into how you can use each blend in your life, whether it is for a full moon or a major cosmic weather event or the sun season. Maybe it's going to be based on your own personal unique birth chart. For instance, my man is a Sagittarius sun. So when I need to align with his energy and be a little less Virgo, I drink the Sagittarius blend because our herbalist did an amazing job of listening to my description of each zodiac energy and finding the blends and the combination of herbs that work together to harmonize and make you feel that exact same energy. So thank you so much for letting me get through that really quickly. And let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper by pulling up the chart. Let me and in order to understand this full moon a little bit better, we have to understand the energy of Sagittarius and Gemini. Because if you look at the chart here, we are right smack dab in the center of this lunation. That is us here on earth. And so we are experiencing the rays, the heat, the life, the vitality, the spotlight of the sun shining upon us Sagittarius energy. That's what we're feeling for this entire sun season. But opposite that, we're also going to be feeling the full moon radiating upon us this Gemini energy, right? So when you're looking at the full moon at night, you are looking at the moon in Gemini, but it's a reflection of the energy of the sun in the element of Sagittarius. So what does this mean? Let's break down each one of those zodiac signs and understanding that they're on an axis. They both relate to our mental focus, our mental clarity to our mind. It's just the different aspects of our mind. So the way I like to explain the difference of these two energies is that Gemini rules over our lower conscious mind 
in Sagittarius rules over our higher conscious mind. Gemini is more of the facts, the data, researching, listening to a podcast, reading in a book, going to school, hearing something from your teacher, like you're, you're getting into it and you're analyzing the facts, the numbers, the specifics, where Sagittarius is the higher conscious mind. So it's more like learning by experience, by getting out in the world, right? It's like the street smarts and Gemini is the book smarts. So here's an example of how I explain it when I'm doing birth chart readings. Gemini is like, hey, I know that there's three pyramids in Egypt because I read it in a book. But Sagittarius energy is like, hey, I know there's three pyramids in Egypt because I wandered into the desert, got lost, and ran upon some pyramids. So I know that they're there. Both Sagittarius and Gemini understands the concept at large, but they're coming at it from a different perspective. So every time we have a full moon in Gemini, once a year, we are having to blend or merge because, again, we're in the middle of this energy, our higher conscious understanding through our experiences, our beliefs, our philosophies, what we know to be true because we live on earth school and then our mindset around the data, the facts, the research, the information, what makes sense based on the statistics. And we're blending that at this time. So like I said, as a relational astrologer, communication, different mindsets, different opinions, different beliefs, even numbers can be skewed, right? Is all coming into play when we're dealing with this specific full moon. So that then leads me into talking about what makes the full moon in Gemini unique and specific to 2023. If we have a full moon in Gemini every single year, why is this one different? So when I do my fun facts, that's what I'm describing. And I usually do five fun facts, but for this full moon in Gemini, I only have three. So first things first, right now in the sky, what makes this full moon in Gemini unique to 2023 is that the ruling planet Mercury is in his pre-shadow phase. What does this mean? Well, Mercury is about to go retrograde. When we get into December, he is going to go backwards in the sky. He will be in the energy of Capricorn when he starts to retrograde. But where he ends his retrograde is at 22 degrees of Sagittarius. And when we look at the chart right now, we can see Mercury is already past 22 degrees. He's at 24 degrees of Sagittarius. Meaning when he gets back to this point that he is right now at this full moon in Gemini, we are going to have to go back to the conversations we're having right now. We're going to have to go back to the information we're experiencing and learning and gaining in our life. So I want you to pay attention. It's very unique. Every year, the full moon in Gemini comes around and Mercury is the ruler, but where he is in the sky is always different. And even though he may be in the exact same place in the sky, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's about to go retrograde and come back to this point. So very unique to this energy. So just remember that conversations, communication, contracts, um, experiences, anything that relates to you sharing information or another person sharing information with you, you're going to have to come back to it. And again, we're having a lot of fogginess and haziness around this time. So just proceed with caution and assume automatically that nothing is factual at this time. And you're going to have a chance to revisit by the time we get to January. The second fun fact is we can see here in the sky that we have a massive T-square energy going on. A T-square is essentially meaning that one planet is in a square with two other planets. The sun and the moon opposite each other. That's what causes a full moon, right? And each the sun and the moon are both in a square with Saturn. This is huge energy because remember, squares are tension points. Squares are decisions we have to make with one energy coming this way and the other that way. We are at the point on Earth where we have to decide left or right, which direction are we going to go? So we are feeling the pressure of both planets, both trying to help guide us to take a step forward. And remember, Saturn is back at zero. So he is back to the beginning of his retrograde, starting over in the energy of Pisces. So it's like, hey, let's redo this. Let's have more Pisces compared passion, empathy, forgiveness. Let's try to lean into other people and understand that maybe they don't know what they're talking about and they're just doing the best that they can. And the moon and the sun, this lunation is going to be highlighting that. So there's going to be a lot of tension around that. Just know this is a major T-square energy and it's forcing us to see things in a different light. And the third fun fact is that we just experienced a sun-Mars Kazemi. 
The sun in Mars Kazemi essentially means that the sun and Mercury run into each other in the sky. This happens once every 2.2 years, and it happened in the energy of Scorpio. And this starts a new cycle for the next 2.2 years. And why that's important and why that's a fun fact is because we can see Mars at the time of this full moon in Gemini is conjunct the sun. They just were together in the sky. They entered into Sagittarius almost side by side. They're still very close together with each other. So we're still feeling this energy. Now, since we've kind of highlighted what some of the planets are up to around the time of the full moon in Gemini, let's get into the specifics. Get out your own unique birth chart. Again, if you have it, I'm going to give you some degree points where the other planets are and how they're impacting us specifically. This full moon in Gemini is happening on November 27th at 4.17 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you adjust that for your time zone. We can see Mars right next door at two degrees of Sagittarius as well. And the ruling planet Mercury at 24 degrees of Sagittarius. So we have three planets in Sagittarius giving us this lens or perspective of the higher conscious mind, right? Sagittarius, helping us zoom out a little bit, making decisions based on our experience and our wisdom. It's about how we've learned things in life by doing them. We're looking at our belief systems and our philosophy, the things that we hold very dear to us. So Mercury is giving us that, Mars is giving us that, and the sun is giving us that. Now we are seeing in the sky the highlight, the reflection of Gemini, which is communication and information sharing and conversations and socializing and networking and connecting. And so while we're doing all of that, we're feeling really busy at this time. We're wanting to socialize. We're wanting to network. We're feeling very um, exuberant and wanting to kind of get out there in the world. So if you're feeling very social right now, that's okay. Just understand we have to be under the Sagittarius influence of zooming out a little bit and having trust and faith that the information that we need will be coming even if we can't grasp it in the moment. Now remember Mars is here too. So how we're taking action and how we're moving forward is based on our experience, based on our philosophy, based on our belief systems. So maybe you need to question those and where are you limiting your beliefs? Where are you holding yourself back by those thoughts and maybe your experience isn't really the truth or the reality of the situation you're experiencing right now. So that is all energy we're going to be feeling at this time. Now remember, Mercury is the ruler of this full moon. And so whatever he's up to, he's kind of like the main life coach at this time. And he's at 24 degrees of Sagittarius in that direct exact square with Neptune in Pisces, who's also at 24 degrees. Now Neptune and Saturn are both in Pisces, with Saturn squaring Mars and Neptune squaring Mercury. Mercury and Mars both being in Sagittarius, so double square energy at this time. Now, how is this impacting us? Remember, Neptune is illusion, fantasy, rose-colored glasses, looking at the brighter side of life, fantasizing, dreaming, not really wanting to be on Earth and know the concrete facts and data. And Mercury's like, we have to talk about this. We have to find the information. We have to spread the truthful message. We have to get to the bottom of it. And Neptune's like, why? Why? Like, let's just live in La La Land. It's better to not know, right? Let's just make something up. Let's just be creative. Let's use flowery language and no one's going to ask for the exact information. And so that's the energy that we're feeling here on earth. So pay attention to that. It's going to be really hard to kind of pin down exactly what someone is saying. They're not even going to be able to explain it the way that they need to. So just let this energy pass. Now, remember, Mercury's coming back to this point, 24 degrees. He's going to cross over it, go to 22, and then cross over it one more time as he moves forward on and through the zodiac signs. So this point, this conversation, this experience under the full moon in Gemini, you might have to have it two more times. You might have to circle back multiple times. Gemini is the twins, right? Multiple times to get the concrete answers to move forward in the transformation that we started at the new moon in Scorpio. But I do want to share before we wrap this up where Venus is in the sky around the time of this full moon, because Venus as a life coach rules over our relationships, right? She's the feminine energy, our ability to receive. She rules over all the things in our life that we love, relationships, money, material possessions, our creative projects, all of those things. So it's important to know where she is, especially for me as a relational astrologer. And we can see that Venus is in Libra, her home sign. So our relationships have been finding more balance, more peace, more harmony. We're looking and accessing at what relationships make us feel good. We're trying to beautify them, make them very, very pleasurable. And that may require you 
ending some of those relationships that don't make you feel that way. That may require you ending even just a pattern or a habit or a behavior within the relationships if you do want to keep them around for the long haul. So we can see here that Venus is at 21 degrees of Libra. In just a few short days, she's going to run directly into the south node at 24 degrees of Libra. And this is kind of that karmic reset, right? The south node is about releasing, cutting away, letting go. And we have not had the south node in Libra in 19 years. So it's been 19 years since Venus has run into the South Node in her home sign of Libra. So make sure you know where Libra is in your chart because in that area of life is where you're going to have relationships karmically resetting a new beginning. But Regardless, whatever relationships in your life are being stressed or don't have peace and harmony or balance in them, Libra, the scales, in the few days after this full moon in Gemini, you might release them or at least release the old stagnant energy around them. So be very careful again with the full moon in Gemini being about communication challenges, um, mishaps in information, um, misunderstandings, absolutely, but even aggressiveness or arguments with Mars square Saturn, because a few days later, this Venus south node conjunction that does not happen once but every 19 years is going to then force the things out of your life that cannot be resolved with this miscommunication. So let me give you an example of how this energy may show up or manifest in your life around this time. Let's say you and your partner are really going through it and you're having a lot of communication issues. You're trying to share your feelings, your emotions, your perspective, your beliefs, right? Sagittarius around all the things that are going on and your partner's trying to do the same. And neither one of you can really understand the other person. And every time the other person shares, you start creating a story, you get defensive, right? Mars square Saturn, you're getting argumentative, you throw a challenge, another problem in the pot, and then your partner does the same and you go back and forth and nothing gets solved. You never ever come to a conclusion you're always hitting this dead end, right? So you're going around and around and around. And then this Venus comes conjunct to the South Node. And it's like this immediate understanding of if I want peace, if I want harmony, I need to let this go. We can't keep fighting about the same thing over and over and over again and never going anywhere. I need a reset. I need an energetic letting go of the old things, the past stories, the past experiences, what they did to hurt me. It's almost like I'm letting go of the resentment and I'm forgiving, right? Saturn's in Pisces. So we need to forgive. We need to move on. If we have goals and dreams of what we want our relationship to look like and we want to transform it, we got to cut things out. And that's the past. And that's by forgiving and empathy and compassion. And so there's this beautiful energy, a possibility of healing and forward momentum, but it's not going to to come without those challenges that is indicated at the time of this full moon. So that's just an example. It could play out like that in so many different relationships in your life. So to know which specific area of your life and what relationships are going to be most impacted, let's break into the rising signs. So my Aries risings, this full moon in Gemini is happening on the axis of your third and your ninth house with the full moon highlighting your third house space of communication, networks, social groups, your siblings, your neighbors. These are some of the relationships right now that are coming to light, right? With the illumination and the full peaking energy of the full moon that you might have to look at and assess and say, hey, where are the beliefs? Where are the conversations? Where are the hiccups? Where are the misunderstandings around here? And how can I give them more grace or compassion or forgiveness or let something go when it comes to the relationships in my local circle? So again, siblings, neighbors, networking groups, people that you relate to when you are communicating. It could be a teacher. It could be your students. It could be a client that you're working with that you're teaching. Maybe you just need to have more compassion and empathy and let things go. My Taurus risings, this full moon in Gemini is highlighting the axis of your second and your eighth house. This is your financial house. So this is going to highlight and illuminate relationships in your life that relate to money, finances, material possessions, people you share assets and resources with. Maybe it's someone that owes you money. Maybe you owe someone else money. And what's being illuminated with the full moon in Gemini in your second house is how this is impacting your budget, your income, how it's affecting your security, your sense of stability. So you might have communication that you're having with people at this time about, hey, you owe me this money. Hey, how you know maybe it's an accountant. Maybe it's someone in your professional life. And and they're not able to give you the data, the numbers. There's no clarity. It seems money's missing. Um, maybe you're talking to your significant other or sh someone in your household that you share money with, and they're not able to tell you, oh, my rent is late, or this is what's happening. Like, there's just a bunch of miss 
information and miscommunication around your financial access. So be careful with that. Pay really close attention to um, what numbers aren't accurate and you can circle back. You're going to circle back. So don't let the financial relationships in your life um, become a problem. Just allow everyone space to give you the information you're going to need very shortly. My Gemini Risings, this is the full moon of the year that is impacting you in your first house. This is your full moon of the year. This is the relationship you have with yourself and how you relate to other people in your life. The me versus the we. And so this full moon in Gemini is illuminating and highlighting your identity, your boundaries, what you're willing to give to the partnerships in your life. And so you're going to be feeling this pressure in in a lot of conversations around how much you're willing to give up your independence, how much you're willing to lean into the partnership, and also assessing what partnerships allow you to be you. Who makes you feel like you can step into your authentic self and be social and be creative and get out there in the world? And who wants to be a part of your learning? And really assessing at this time who holds you back from that. So there might be some revelations or misunderstandings around who you are, and maybe your partners don't really Really understand who you are and you kind of stepping into explaining that to others. So pay attention to that at this time. My Cancer Risings, you tend to be an emotional being anyways, but this full moon in Gemini is going to be intensifying that with it being in your 12th, 6th house access. The full moon in Gemini is going to be illuminating and spotlighting the 12th house of your subconscious beliefs, your limiting beliefs, your victimhood, your self-sabotage, the things that kind of hold you back from being your best self. So the relationships that are really challenging challenge at this time is the one that you have with you in your mind. Now, there might be some miscommunications and some mishaps and relationships around your physical life, your daily routines. This could be your trainer maybe not getting back to you. This could be your coworkers not helping you with tasks around work. So your day-to-day -day life and the things that you do on an overall, you know, routine, mundane world, those relationships might be a little confusing, conversations going awry, no one seems to know what's going on, but pay attention to your mental health. This is really you being your own worst enemy and the illumination of where you're doing that and sabotaging yourself. And we're going to let that go at this time, okay? Because it is a full moon. Leo Risings, this full moon in Gemini is highlighting your access of the 11th and the 5th house with the full moon itself illuminating the 11th house of your friendship, social circle, and community. So where you're going to have relationship challenges with misunderstandings, uh, nobody really knowing what's going on is really around your friendships. So there's going to be a lot of mishaps. People are going to be sharing information with you. You're trying to connect with friends. You're trying to get together with friends. People aren't showing up at the right time. People aren't calling back. You might get triggered by by something your friend says. So pay attention. And what I want you to recognize is the sun in Sagittarius is highlighting your fifth house of fun, of joy, of romance, of creativity. So tap into that. Maybe you need to go back to what you love to do and do it anyways, whether your friends show up or not, whether they participate or not. So there's just going to be a lot of strain and friendships, but lean into what you like to do alone or with friends. That's gonna really help you navigate through this energy. Now my Virgo risings, this full moon in Gemini is illuminating your 10th, fourth house access. So this is your area of home and family and your career life with the full moon in Gemini spotlighting and highlighting and illuminating your career. So these are the relationships in your life that there could be a lot of misunderstandings, miscommunications around. So if you're at work, you're trying to talk to people about getting things done. Maybe you're trying to go for a promotion and just nobody seems to know what's going on. So pay attention attention. That's where the biggest challenges are. But lean in. The sun in Sagittarius is highlighting your fourth house of home and family. So pay attention. Go home. Enjoy time with your family. Redecorate your home. Make your home more beautiful. And allow the conversations and the mishaps in your work life to kind of pass by. Don't give them too much energy. You're going to circle back to this point when Mercury goes retrograde later on in the year. Now, my Libra risings, this puts this full moon in Gemini in your ninth, third house axes. So this is about learning, changing your mindset, changing the information that you've gathered and the relationships in your life that help you get more information. So the full moon in Gemini is going to be illuminating your ninth house. So it's going to highlight or spotlight or help you see clearly around who in your life, maybe you don't need any more to mentor you. Maybe you've had someone that you've looked up to, someone that's helped you formulate your belief system 
outcomes, maybe someone that's helped you travel or expand yourself or learn things in the world. And you're realizing that maybe they don't have all the information. Maybe they're only sharing things with you based on their own personal experience. So you're expanding your mindset and your own inner wisdom. And so there's a lot of confusion, a lot of miscommunication. You might be thinking, wow, for the longest time I put this person on a pedestal. I thought they were the greatest teacher in the world. And now I'm realizing they don't even know what they're talking about. So we're going back to the sun and being in your third house, illuminating your ability to learn, to share your own information, to speak, express, and write. So lean into the information you know to be true and don't rely on other people or what you considered your experts, wisdom, mentor kind of people to give you instead. Now my Scorpio risings, this puts this full moon in Gemini in your eighth, second house axes. So this is about your finances and the people that you share money with, with the full moon highlighting the eighth house. So it's about who owes you money? Who do you owe money? What does your partner's money look like? Do you have a debt that you owe to some other place? Do you have siblings or someone in your life you're sharing an inheritance with or splitting an inheritance with? There's some sort of external money that there's miscommunications around. Maybe you thought there was more money. Maybe you thought you only owed so much money. Maybe someone told you to pay them back by a certain date and there was a miscommunication around how much money. So just be careful with any conversations in relationships related to finance, income, um, debts, inheritances, resources, or assets that you share. Maybe it's a roommate. Um, just be very careful. Again, there's just going to be misunderstandings. But lean in with the second house in Sagittarius in your income sector where you get to determine how much money you make. Maybe you look at for another stream of income. Maybe you're looking and assessing at what material possessions you have that you don't need that you're going to sell. So this is a very relationship-oriented full moon that's going to affect the financial aspect of your relationships. Sagittarius risings, this full moon in Gemini is impacting your deepest intimate relationships because the full moon axis is your seventh and first house with the full moon itself illuminating those deeper connections, romantic, marriage, business, friendships you've had for a long, long time, or even your enemies is something that could be highlighted at this time. So pay attention to those specific relationships in your life is where you're going to have the most mishaps, most misunderstandings, arguments, tension points, decisions that you need to make. But remembering the sun is in Sagittarius. This is your first house. This is your specific astrological new year. The sun is highlighting your identity and who you are and how you want to shine and how you want to show up in the world. And maybe those changes and the things that you're doing for yourself is impacting those deepest relationships at this time. And maybe that's the miscommunication that's happening. Maybe you have changed your identity, the way you wear your clothes, the way you put your hair up. And now the people in your life are like, wait, who are you? And they have this whole story that they create that you're not the same person they fell in love with. You're not the person that you once were. And that means X, Y, and Z. And so there could be a miscommunication at this time around who you want to be and how you want to show up and how that's impacting or the story that your deepest friendships or partnerships are reflecting back to you. Now, my Capricorn risings, this full moon in Gemini is happening on your sixth, 12th house axes. So this is really illuminating and highlighting with the full moon in Gemini in your sixth house, the relationships you have with people on your day-to-day -day level. Who are the people in your life that help you stay well? Because that's the sixth house. These are personal trainers. These are coaches. These are mentors. These are therapists. These are also your coworkers, since you might spend a lot of time with them. Um, these are people that you relate to to that either challenge your well-being or enhance your well-being. Um, and then also remembering the sun is in your 12th house. So right now you are getting this highlight, this spotlight shined upon you around your mental health, your own limiting beliefs. Where are you sabotaging yourself? Where are some things that you need to release and let go in your life that is playing the role of victim to you, where you can step more into the places in your day-to-day -day life and make more peace and harmony out of those relationships. Aquarius risings, this full moon in Gemini is happening in your fifth and 11th house axes with the full moon illuminating the fifth house, meaning there's going to be a highlight or a spotlight or an illumination in your fifth house of what brings you joy. These are the relationships that nurture your inner child, having fun with people. Maybe they're people you play sports with. Maybe it's your romantic life, someone you're going on dates with. 
But these are the relationships that are going to have some misunderstandings, some mishaps, some miscommunication, and things going a little wonky. So if you are trying to, you know, play sports with somebody and you're just having very bad communication about who's passing the ball to who, there's not really a good flow of energy. It's the full moon in Gemini. And if you're trying to go on dates with people, there could be a lot of misunderstandings of where to meet up, what time to meet up. You're on the date. They say something. You don't understand it. Maybe you create a whole story and you are offended by something they said. So pay attention to all of that in those areas of life. But remember, with Sagittarius ruling your 11th house of community, social circles, your tribe, it is highlighting that area of your life. So lean back in, go out with friends, do things that are lighthearted, and don't take things too seriously when it comes to the relationships in your romantic life or your dating life. Just go hang out with friends instead. And then my Pisces risings, this full moon in Gemini is impacting your fourth and 10th house axes with the full moon in Gemini being illuminated in your fourth house of home and family. So you are going to have misunderstandings, miscommunications, a lot of tension in the relationships that are related to your home life. This could be the family that you were born into, like your parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, or it could be the family that you've created, your children and the people that live within your home. So be careful. No one's going to know what they're talking about. Just assume that you automatically don't understand um, and just stay curious, stay open and lean back to the sun being in Sagittarius right now in your 10th house. So this is your time to shine in your career. You're getting a spotlight from the sun to see your career life and your professional life and the legacy that you're building a little bit clearer during Sagittarius season. So focus your energy and attention over there. Allow the relationships and the communication in your home and family life to kind of pass by until this full moon energy has dissipated. Hope this was helpful. Remember the full moon is going to highlight that specific area of life that I mentioned based on your rising sign. Those are the main relationships in your life or that surround that specific area that's going to be impacted. But remember, we each have our own unique individual birth chart. And so if you're looking for more individualistic information around each full and new moon, I also do astro forecast readings. If you're looking for a year ahead overview of what you can expect and anticipate, I go through every new and full moon of the upcoming year and look at how they're going to impact you and which ones are going to be more impactful and that you're going to want to pay attention and make a note in your calendar around. So if you're interested in that, you can find it in the description box below. Remember, if you want an astro forecast, reading before 2024. I only have a couple days left where I'm taking readings because I'll be leaving the country on December 10th. And the last thing I want to do is give you some rituals and activities that you can do around the time of this full moon so you can flow through this energy with ease. The first thing you're going to want to do is some nervous system resetting. With Gemini ruling the twins, it's this and that. It's multiple conversations, multitasking. It's all over the place, very chaotic energy. And so right now you're going to want to focus on slowing down. When you get home, turn off off any noise. Don't listen to TV in the background. Listen to calming, soothing music. If you're confused as far as what nervous system resetting is, Google it. There's some amazing resources out there with breath work, sound bath healings, ways that you can just kind of unplug the stimuli in your life and just get grounded, get calm in any way that you possibly can. The second thing you're going to want to do is journal your thoughts and feelings. Try not to share them with other people around this time because it's not going to come across clear. They're going to reflect back to you what you didn't say. It's just not going to go well. So write it down in your journal. It's going to allow you to think things through. It's going to allow you to express yourself. And then afterwards, based on that reflection, is what you can share with others. And the third thing you're going to want to do is probably go out and socialize. Gemini is being lighthearted. It's being witty. It's being fun. It is being curious. So go try out a new activity. Go meet up with a new social group that's going to be so beneficial at this time. Just don't make it serious. So with all of that, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of my Astro family. I hope my videos bring you a lot of guidance and understanding of how you can navigate your relationships. So I'm going to send you so much love and light as we